Hey everyone, today we will be talking about rendering. I believe there are a lot of artists that model really good and their sculpting skills are also good. Yet the vendors lack the juice. To me rendering is an art and today I am going to teach it to you. So this video is a part of series of 4 videos. In each video I will cover one topic that will help you improve your renders. The topics of this series are render and output settings, camera settings, lightings and volumetrics. In this video, we will be discussing render and output settings. So let's get started. Starting with the aspect ratio, the aspect ratio is the ratio of the width to the height of the camera. Common ones are 1.33 ratio 1, 1.78 ratio 1 and 2.35 ratio 1. So each aspect ratio has its own feel associated to it. For example, if you want a cinematic approach to your setup, maybe you would want to use 2.35 ratio 1 aspect ratio. While if it's for commercial use like a product ad, maybe you would want to use the 16 ratio 9 or also called 1.78 ratio 1. Now you don't want to put these numbers in the aspect section, that will mess it up. To understand its solution, you have to understand resolutions and their relations with the aspect ratio. So what is resolution? Resolution is the size of image, so 1920 by 1080 means the image has 1920 pixels on y axis and 1080 pixels on x axis. Now if we divide both, we get 1.78 ratio 1 and that's its aspect ratio. So now even if you're not strong at maths, you can do this. Let's say we need a 1080p video with 2.35 ratio 1 aspect ratio. So it's simple, the shorter side is equal to 1080p and now the 2.35 side or the width will be 2.35 times 1080p that is 2538. So now in resolution section you can put this value and you'll get a widescreen cinematic size that is 1080p. Here's a table for other aspect ratio with the image resolutions. Now that the big two are down in this section, the rest is easy. Now coming up here into render properties, first of all we'll switch to cycle. I like EV but I love cycles. So now if you have done 2.9 install, you can enable adaptive sampling. So what adaptive sampling does is it allows Blender to use lesser sample count on areas which have lesser noise. Zero in the subcategories let Blender decide what is the best value for both. But I would but I still suggest putting 32 samples in minimum sample count. Now going down to performance, we go into tiles and decrease the size to 32 by 32 pixels and check progressive refine. This helps you stop your render when you feel like the image is clear and there is no need for more sampling. Now we will be learning how to denoise using the compositing tab. Also before doing that, just so you know, Blender 2.9 has a denoising feature on their sampling panel where you can turn on denoising. That's why I'm also telling this other way that has worked for me previously. So we start off by turning on denoising data under passes. Then we go to Compositing tab and check the Use Nodes option. Press Shift A and search Denoise. Connect it to Viewer node and that's it. This will improve your results without increasing the sample count. Now this winds up our basic settings for our render. Now in our next video, we'll talk about camera settings and how it can improve your renders. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to to get more content.